Here we go. Lilo and Layla's History Adventures. Hey, what's with all the old books? They're from the library. I'm writing my career report on doctors. Cool. Are you still thinking you might want to be a doctor when you grow up? <sighs> I'm not sure anymore. Being a doctor takes years of school and exams. I thought it would be easier. Uh, uh, achoo! Oh, my throat's starting to hurt. And this itchy nose is really bugging me. Ew, you've probably got that nasty cold that's going around. Stay away from me. Oh. Man, I, I wonder if I wonder if this episode is going to have like a doctor like stare into the camera and be like, don't wear a mask, kids. It, it'll kill you. Wearing a mask and getting vaccinated, both these things will kill you. Like. Stay away! This report is taking up all my energy. The last thing I need is your germs making me sick. But you're my sister! Wait, is this Prager you advocating for social distancing? That's crazy, dog. Shouldn't you be helping me? Especially when I'm dying! Okay, fine. I can't risk helping you right now, but maybe someone from the History app can nurse you back to health. But don't get too uh, close. Huh? Wait. You. Your brother has a cold, so you're time traveling him to 410 BC for medical care? Why would you do that? What? Why? Why would you why would you take your brother to a doctor that's more than 2000 years out of date? Why, why would you do that? Wait. Cure for cold in ancient Greece. Okay. Let's see. Classical Greek healing practices were diverse. Philosophically learned doctors practiced rational medicine. Midwives and root cutters provided services and curatives. Sacrifices to prescribed gods or other religious devotions were another path away from illness. Okay, kid, go sacrifice that baby lamb in the temple up on the hill and you'll be right as rain in a couple of days. Where are we? Ah, two more students. You're just in time for the lesson. Two drachmas, please. School? On the weekend? Talk about a bummer. What my brother means is that we're not students here. We're time travelers from the future. The future? Mount Olympus, that's amazing. Did Apollo send you? He's the god of prophecies and can make predictions about the future. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good old Apollo. In that case, I'm honored to share everything I know. I'm Hippocrates, and I've spent my whole... Ah, here, here's one. The ancient Greeks consumed a drink called a Tsiporo, si, 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 or Raki, which was made from leftover mash of winemaking. They had then added a little cinnamon and honey to create a remedy that eased cold symptoms. life helping the sick and injured hmm sounds like you're a doctor uh, you could say that like my father heraclides i've always been curious about the human body in fact i became a physician like him so i could learn about health and find cures for common ailments recently i've been traveling all over greece and teaching people about health and medicine there's a lot of superstition surrounding those things but i'm training my fellow greeks to leave that behind Instead, I'm teaching them to recognize symptoms and diagnose an illness so they can treat it properly. That's perfect. I'm writing a report on doctors. Maybe you can help me. Oh, I'm not much of a scribe. My pupils do most of the writing for me. You see, every time I treat someone, I add their symptoms to my list of medical facts. You see, many people think dark magic or even the gods make people sick. They think the only way to cure them is to dance and shout. This this guy's name is Hippocrates. Uh, Hippocrates. Out and scare the evil spirits away. But I have a different theory. People get sick for natural reasons that we can observe and understand. But we're always learning. 
There's still so much about the human body that remains a mystery. Maybe you can help me. <clears throat> I haven't been feeling that great. Ugh, gross. Stay away from me, Leo. Are you kidding? I'm not even... Huh? Shoo! That's quite a sneeze, young man. Let me have a look at you. Uh, Mr. Hippocrates, I think you should keep your distance. My brother has a pretty bad cold. Layla! You don't know that! Leo, we don't want to get him sick. That's very thoughtful of you, young lady, but I'm not worried. One thing I tell all of my students is that we can't jump to conclusions. If we really want to help someone who's suffering, we keep calm and look for symptoms of what we're dealing with. And I've caught something from a patient once or twice. It wasn't too bad. But shouldn't you be careful? If there aren't many doctors and if people are counting on you, it's a big problem if you get sick. I see your point, but helping the sick means taking those risks. When a terrible plague came through Athens, many thousands died, and that includes the physicians who stayed to help people. But those who survived passed on their knowledge of what happened. Now we know what that terrible disease and its symptoms look like, and we know that it spreads in crowded places. Is it quiet? It's quiet? I can turn it up. Do, 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 do. Okay, sorry. Um, but like, the thing is here, because generally they try and draw a bit of a parallel between historical events and the events of today. Um, if you could give doctors protective uh, measures that they could take during, say, a gigantic illness uh, outbreak, it would be good if they took those def like protective measures, like wearing masks of some kind. That that might actually be a good and helpful thing to do, right? Um, oddly enough, Prager, you not really not really supportive of masks or. Um, you know, taking precautions a, 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 around the ill. Um, because again, their perspective is just, ah, oh, you know, people will die from a great illness. You know, you just do your best and uh, live your life and uh, don't give a fuck about anybody else. He's saying go to work even if you're sick. Work is the most important thing. Yeah, exactly. Where we can't keep things sanitary. Wow, I didn't know that doctors risked everything to show compassion to those sick people. That's so heroic. Maybe things are easier in the future, but for now, risk is part of the job. And yes, whenever we're helping someone, we always show compassion. You see, Layla? We even learned about that in Sunday school. The Bible says we should help those who are suffering, not stay away from them. All right, Leo, you've got a point. I'm sorry you're not feeling well. Being stressed about my report is no excuse. Wait, the lesson the lesson of this video is that when you're when when you're surrounded by sick people, you should not distance yourself and you should actually just be around them constantly. That that's how you get sick. That's that that's how illness spreads, especially if it's a respiratory illness. Spread through water droplets, like the, the bacteria in water droplets, or the viruses in water droplets. Like that's the it be you being in close proximity spreads the disease to other people. To be mean to you, I'll try to be more understanding. Thank you. <laughs> what? She wasn't even being mean to you, you little shit. She she just didn't want to get sick. She wanted to work on her project, and now she's time traveling with you. How about an air high five? Speaking of symptoms, young man, tell me more about what's bothering you. Well, my throat feels like sandpaper, and my nose itches from all the sneezing. Hmm, when did you first notice these symptoms? Well, I felt- Oh, oh god, he's gonna- he's gonna- he's gonna- <laughs> we, we- we're coming full circle. Earlier in stream, someone made a joke about, uh, trep- trepanning? He's, he's about to drill a hole in that child's head. Release some uh, pressure on the brain. Fine at school. It all really started when I walked into the kitchen with Layla. Let's see. I don't hear any troubled breathing. 
And you don't feel like you're running a temperature. That's a relief. Maybe it isn't a cold after all. Well, young man, are you getting enough sleep and rest? Have you been exercising and keeping yourself clean? Um, I take at least one shower a week. This guy literally doesn't have a concept of germ theory. Why are you taking health advice from him? He, he literally doesn't know what actually causes illnesses. Why are you doing a, why are you doing a health consult with him? His medical knowledge is 2,400 years out of date. Is this Prager you? Ab it absolutely is. Why? Why? <laughs> even, even if you're like, well, this child doesn't know that. His older sister definitely does. His older sister knows that, like, even if you go back as, like, into, like, the 1800s, people were like, ah, oh, yes, you, you can't masturbate because semen is, is actually spinal fluid. It's, it's the fluid that makes your brain work. So if you come too much, you'll die and also become stupid. Like, you're, you're going back before those times for, for medical advice. You, you know, like, people were getting, like, cholera in, in London because they were, drinking, they were drinking water with their own shit in it constantly. And that, that was, like, in the 1800s. And you want to go 2,200 years earlier than that. That's a choice. Yeah, the, <laughs> this Hippocrates is about to prescribe this child a, a lovely, a lovely uh, beverage of mercury from a lead-lined cup. Eek. Does that count? Gross, Leo. Only one? It's a good start. I'm asking because I've seen good rest and hygiene help many of my patients recover. And if you don't want to get sick in the first <laughs> He's place, about to get some exercising, like... getting enough rest, and eating a balanced diet are always good bets. Hmm. Now, let's see. Aha! Hey! What is that thing? Oh, I keep it on hand in case I need to cut something off. Are you ready? Well, what? No, no, no way. <laughs> I'm kidding, young man. When someone's sick or injured, they're usually not in a good mood. I tell my students that a good joke can lighten things up. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> this, this, this child is about like, I don't know, one, one, one false step away from like. <laughs> Like, not having a kidney. About to wake up in an ice bath. I guess. So what do you think, Mr. Hippocrates? Is Leo really sick with a cold? <sighs> like, at this point, like, to really emphasize and, and emphasize things here, this is a time before they knew what organs were, chat. They, they, they knew some rough information about organs, but they didn't know what any of that inside bits do. They didn't know that. They just know if you, if you get poked in one, you, you, red stuff comes out and it hurts. Honest, I don't have a diagnosis. His symptoms are mild and there appear to be no injuries. Plus, he sounds like he's feeling better. I really am. It's the weirdest thing. Hmm, but aren't you a famous doctor who really knows your stuff? Shouldn't you be able to find out what's going on? Rem he's from 2,400 years in the past. He's doing the best he can with what he has. Remember, young lady, we physicians have a lot of knowledge, but we don't know everything. It's taken me years and years of observing patients, trying remedies, and recording what I learned to even get this far. Hmm. I think I understand why doctors spend so much time in school and take so many tests. It sounds like there's just too much to know. That's true, but we can still do a lot with what we do know. It's like I always tell my students, first, do no harm. Second, help the sick according to your ability and judgment. But that's it. Thank you for your help, Mr. Hippocrates. I'm sorry. Just real quick. I, I noticed a movement in his arm. 
much to know. That's true, but we can still do a lot with what we do know. It's like I always tell my students. First, do no harm. Second, help the sick according to your ability and judgment. But that's it. Thank you for your help, Mr. Hippocrates. It just We've looked so a lot weird. Here, and we appreciate it. It was my pleasure, children. Oh, and when you get back to Apollo, tell him Hippocrates says hello. Will do. Goodbye. Bye. What? What? He he literally thought they were from the gods. And there, I finished my report. Did you know Hippocrates is considered the father of medicine? Did did you really have to stand there and watch me write my entire report? It was weird. And remember how he said first do no harm? Apparently that's no part of an oath of medical ethics that came from his teachings. It's called the Hippocratic Oath. Nice work. What do you think about being a doctor now? We'll have to see. But it's amazing how much doctors have to know and how much responsibility they have. After talking to Hippocrates, I think I understand where that comes from. Yeah, he's pretty cool. And you know what else? Uh, uh. Achoo! Oh no, you were feeling great a few minutes ago. I know, but here in the kitchen, I can't stop sneezing. <laughs> Maybe I'm allergic to future doctors. Or, based what? on the pattern of your symptoms, maybe you're allergic to all these dusty old books. You know, I think you're right. In the kitchen, I can't stop sneezing. <laughs> I think I understand where that comes from. Sorry. Yeah, he's pretty cool. And you know what else? Uh. Uh, achoo! Oh no, you were feeling great a few minutes ago. I know, but here in the kitchen, I can't stop sneezing. <laughs> Maybe I'm allergic to future doctors. Maybe I'm allergic to future doctors? What is, what does that mean, chat? Like what, what does that actually, what does that actually mean? Like, oh, like he's allergic to his sister, who might be a future doctor, or he's allergic to, like, going to the doctor in the future. It's a bit confusing, as they are time travelers. But he was sneezing before he saw a doctor? Yeah. Let's go back in time and ask Socrates. I agree. Maybe I'm allergic to women who don't make me a sandwich. No, the misogyny. Or based on the pattern of your symptoms, maybe you're allergic to all these dusty old books. You know, I think you're right. I knew my hygiene wasn't to blame. You still have to take more showers, Leo. Ew. Thanks for time traveling with Leo and Layla. Pre <sighs> oh my god. Bunch of silly gooses.